YouTube can take over your life and your sanity if you let it. It's so easy to find yourself obsessing over the view count, repeatedly refreshing your YouTube studio app to see if you've got any new subscribers and watching hours of YouTube tutorials teaching you how to do YouTube. Even the ones that tell you that YouTube will burn you out if you're not careful. Hi, I'm Bev and as a relatively new YouTuber with a small channel, I've definitely found myself falling into the obsessive, compulsive behaviour. I know I can get completely and irrationally immersed in YouTube and it can sometimes take me away from doing the important stuff that I should be doing in my business because as an ADHD, I do have a tendency to become quite obsessive with things that interest me. And whilst that's a good thing, I think it's always useful to go deep. It's also all encompassing. And if I'm not careful, it really can take over my life and have a detrimental impact on things like my sleep, my mental health, my social life, my relationships, my business, everything can potentially suffer when that obsessive compulsive need to figure it all out really kicks in. So I thought I'd share with you today some lessons and some strategies that I've decided over the last year help to manage my obsessive compulsion with YouTube. And it is a work in progress. I think it, it's something that I'm constantly having to redefine, refine and return to in order to make sure that I don't fall into the bad habits that, if I'm honest, I'm having to try and break out of right at this minute as I'm seeing some growth on the channel. It's like it's feeding the obsessive compulsion. So I love a, a bit of alliteration. And when I was trying to do some sort of research and brainstorming around what I wanted to include in this video, everything I came up with seemed like it started with the letter C. So I've got two big C's and six little C's to share with you. So I hope you'll find them helpful, especially if you're a new creator or you're thinking about getting started on YouTube or just if you recognize any of these things in yourself, maybe it'll give you just a moment to stop and think about the impact that they may be having on you. So let's dive in. The first big C is about content in general. So YouTube is a content platform and it's user generated content. I know I'm probably telling you stuff you already know, but what that means is there is endless amounts of content out there. Now, I could have dived into the numbers and the stats about how many people are on YouTube and how many people are watching YouTube every day, every hour, but I think it's relevant. Let's just be fully aware that it's a content platform and there is endless amounts of content out there. I think if I was starting again, and this is what I'm trying to do now, is break content down into manageable chunks and the way I've broken it down is first of all to talk about content consumption say another C there's consumption for learning for research to help me grow my YouTube channel and then there's consumption for leisure and that is more about me watching YouTube because I enjoy the platform and I enjoy the content that's on there and what I've found in the past is that those two have got a little bit merged together. And I haven't really been that intentional about the reasons for consuming that content. And what that's led to are almost binge watching YouTube videos and going down rabbit holes and losing hours and hours of time and not being intentional about the purpose for consuming that content. In, in reality, I guess I've broken it down into three areas. There's research, training, and leisure. So what I've tried to do now is set specific times 
for each of those activities. Some content overlaps, so there are people on YouTube that I love to follow that I watch because they tra their training is really good. I watch it because I want to research how they do things. I want to learn from their topics and, and how they deliver their content. I want to research their thumbnails and titles and see if there's something there that I can draw inspiration from. And I watch them because I just love their content from a personality and an entertainment point of view. So there is some overlap in the content, but what I'm trying to do now is be more intentional about the purpose and set aside time to be intentional. So for example, if I want to learn something specific and I'm gonna use YouTube as my source of information, I will allocate a time and a time limit, so maybe an hour, to find some videos that kind of meet my need and to watch them. Or maybe I've come across a video that I've saved and I want to go back and watch it because I know it'll be beneficial to learning a, a skill or something that would be useful for my YouTube journey or my business or any other thing that I want to learn about. And I will basically schedule that time. I know that I've got an hour to do that. And when I'm learning from stuff on YouTube, I tend to have my iPad and I'm making notes or I'll have a notebook or just scraps of paper like this and I'm making notes. So I'm watching not to be a passive observer in the content, but actually to get involved and make notes and to learn from it. So that would be the first thing I would do is to really set the purpose and schedule out a time to watch that content. And if it's research, then again, same thing. I would set time aside to do maybe some research around topic ideas, thumbnail ideas, content inspiration, all of that sort of thing. Schedule it, set a time and stick to it. And even my leisure watching, I realised that I needed to be more intentional because I might start off watching something just for pure entertainment as a passive observer, but it would take me down a rabbit hole of research and learning and I could end up watching back-to-back -back YouTube videos into the small hours of the evening and that's not healthy. So again, I will schedule my leisure watching and I'll make sure that if I'm watching YouTube videos, for entertainment, I won't have the means to, <laughs> to take notes or to, to dive into the learning mindset, which is very difficult for me because I am a natural learner. I like to learn stuff, but I think it's about that intentionality. The other thing I would suggest that I find has worked for me is to have a separate channel for my leisure content to my research and training content. And the reason being, I think the algorithm sees what you watch and it gives you more of it. If everything is on the same channel, my leisure watching is interspersed with the stuff that I want to learn and research from. So it takes me down a rabbit hole. Whereas if I have a separate channel for the stuff that I just love watching, like I've got a couple of vloggers that I really enjoy watching, but they're not my demographic, they're not, um, people that I would particularly want to copy their ideas or you know learn from they just I find them really entertaining so by having those channels show up on a different YouTube channel it means that I can get YouTube to curate my feed to match my intentions if that makes sense and the second C under uh, the big C the second one is creation and I think in order to keep your sanity around creation, one of the things I've really learned and I'm very focused on trying to make happen is to reduce as much friction as possible in the creation process. Despite the fact that I've bought over the last couple of years tons of different bits of equipment, fancy lighting, fancy microphones, which I've just realized I am not wearing. I've forgotten to put my microphone on. I think I'm going to add another C <laughs> that's just come into my head and that is have a checklist but reduce the friction wherever possible and they say the best camera is the one that you will use the one that you always have to hand 
and whilst I've got nice cameras what I'm finding is I'm much more likely to create the video if I just sit and talk it to my phone. So keeping it simple, keeping it friction free as possible I'm finding is really helpful. And the other thing, there's a lot of C's here so the next one is to commit within your capacity. Who knew there were so many words beginning with C? So when you're getting started, you need to find a cadence. There's another one. Find a cadence that works for you. That might be one video a week. It might be three videos a week. It might be one video a month. But you want to think about your capacity and create within that capacity and commit to it though. If you can do one a week, commit to doing one a week. Because this is a slow game, it's not a fast process, it does take some time as I'm finding, but it's that commitment, it does take time and I, this whole video is about how it can take over your life and it can do, but if you set out I think intentionally at the very start by recognising what you can commit to understanding your capacity. So if you are working full time or if you're working part time or if you've got caring commitments, more flippin' C's. Think about how much time you've actually got to be able to commit to it and stick to it. So plan your content creation out to meet your capacity. And the third thing around creation, which I wish I'd done more of in the beginning, is to really think longer term and plan out your content creation and ideas into the future don't I remember when I was learning to drive and my, I go out with my dad and my dad would say don't look at what's just in front of you you need to raise your eyes up and look right out way into the distance to see what's happening there you don't want to be focused just ahead of the, the, the bonnet or the hood you want to be way further out in the distance and I think that's what you have to be with YouTube as well there's no point in just focusing on what am I going to do tomorrow or what am I going to do next week. Think longer term and part of that I think is about having some sort of way to capture your uh, content ideas. So we'll talk about that in a, a little while but that comes under the other big C. Somebody's just decided to strim their lawn. Sorry about that, I hope you can still hear me. So yes, planning and scheduling your content into the longer term is going to make life so much easier. And then the third C under this, the third little C, although I think I've done a lot more Cs, under the content umbrella is about commenting. So you consume your content, you create your content, but then I think we need to start com looking at comments. That means if you want people to engage with your content, and you want them to comment on your videos, you need to start commenting on other people's videos. Now, this is something I didn't do much for a very long time. I would watch the videos and I might even binge watch one after the other and really enjoy the content, but I rarely ever stopped to leave a comment. And I don't know why I didn't really, but what I've found is since I've started to comment all more people are commenting on my content. The other thing about comments is I think when you upload a video, you need to be ready to reply to comments in as swift a time as you can. So you get some momentum around that video. If somebody's taken the time to leave a comment, I think it's only courteous to reply to that comment as quickly as possible. And you might not always get the notification that somebody's left a comment so schedule a bit of time to actually go through your videos go through the comments and respond to them I think that's really important especially if you want to build a community around your um, YouTube content the second big C is about commitment touched on it a little bit already but I see there are another three C's underneath the big C of commitment. And the first one is about curiosity. So I think if you're going to have a YouTube channel and you want to make it a success, you've got to adopt a curiosity mindset. That for me is about 
looking for videos that you can watch that are outside of your content topic or outside of your niche to get curious about what other people are doing because quite often you can see something in somebody else's niche and it'll trigger an idea that you can bring back into your niche but also it just broadens your interests and makes you probably a better communicator because you're finding new and interesting topics that you can draw on within your own content. So also things like listening to podcasts and listening to other people's perspectives and other people's ideas. That way you can give a commentary maybe on something you've heard or it'll just again help you to look at things from a different perspective. Asking questions within your community, you've got the community feed, using that to, to ask questions and really find out what your community think and then their answers and their responses are likely to help you with your content ideas and give you inspiration for future videos. I think as well reading comments on other people's videos and getting curious about what's driving their questions and maybe using that as a, a, a means to uh, generate ideas for your own content as well. Idea generation is hard. Knowing what's going to work and what isn't is hard. And finding new and innovative ways to do things, creative ways to do things is hard. So let's use what's already out there. So the, the second C under commitment is copy. Yeah, I know it sounds a bit naughty, but go and copy what other people have been doing. Not verbatim, not copying exactly what they're doing. But this, when we look at most successful people in life, whether that's in business or whatever, they have a mentor or they have mentors and they have people that they are inspired by. And nothing in life generally is new. Most of what we're talking about on YouTube has been done before. So why not model what other people are doing that is working? And it is copying to all intents and purposes. It's copying, but it's not a carbon copy. It's not, do you remember when you were a kid and you used to get tracing paper and you'd put the tracing paper over a picture and you'd draw it exactly? We're not using a tracing paper approach to copying, but we are using content that's out there that is working, that feels right for us, that it feels like something we could copy in terms of style or be able to put our own stamp on it, our own personality. So I'm not suggesting that we go and try and be somebody else, but certainly copy ideas and copy the inspiration, model what is working out there. So the idea for this video is a copy. I watched, a, I actually didn't watch the, the whole video. I have now because I've written out my plan for the video, but I wanted to watch the main part of the video after I'd taken the title and description and put my own spin on it. But it was by John Willis, who I think is the channel that I'm watching, I think is a fairly new channel. I don't think he's new to YouTube, but I think the channel that I got this inspiration from is fairly new. And his thumbnail really caught my eye. And the title of his video was How YouTube Can Destroy Your Life Was in Capitals. And I thought, I really relate to that because I wouldn't say it's destroyed my life. I felt like that title was it's my dog. I don't know what she's found. What she's found. I'll carry on. I didn't feel like YouTube had destroyed my life, but I definitely felt like it had taken over my life. So I took his title and I put my own spin on it, which is why this video is YouTube can take over your life. So I copied him, but I'm not him. And there's nothing about what I'm talking about, I don't believe, that was in his video. Because I didn't watch the video until I'd created my own take on that title. So I think copying is absolutely fine. 
I just think we need to be careful that we are still showing up as ourselves and not trying to be somebody that we're not because that isn't going to work. And the third C that I think will help if you do feel like YouTube is taking over your life is to make sure that you capture your ideas and your inspirations. I would say try and keep a catalogue of ideas. I use Notion. I have Notion on my phone. I also have it on desktop. And when I have an idea or if I'm watching something and it triggers a bit of inspiration, I will just jot it down in my phone because I've always got my phone near me. But you could use a notebook or you could use Google Sheets or the Notes app on your phone. You could use any means to capture, but make sure that you capture the idea when you have it. Lucy, don't wait, especially not if you're a postmenopausal midlife woman, because I swear to God, by the time it takes you to walk from one room to the other, that idea will have come and gone and it will have disappeared into the ether, never to be seen again. So make sure that you capture it there and then. And if you're an old school type of person, always have a little notebook by you or even a sheet of paper, just jot it down there and then and put it into your notes app or whatever when you get the chance, but definitely capture the idea. And it doesn't matter whether they're good ideas or bad ideas. I was listening to uh, a video by uh, Colin and Spear earlier today and they were saying, start with a hundred video title ideas. Just sit down and write down a hundred and that is hard. A hundred, probably most of them aren't even going to be any good, but it doesn't matter. It's about getting your brain working. And I'm um, part of Justin Brown's Primal Video Accelerator program. And one of the things he introduced us to was the idea of an icebox for ideas. So they're ideas that maybe they don't fill you with inspiration right there and then, but they might have legs. You don't know, but you're going to capture them anyway. So in my notion, I have an icebox and in that icebox, I put ideas that realistically, am I ever going to get around to doing them? I don't know. I don't know. Probably not. They're not the ones that are stirring an emotion in me right now to want to go and make the video, but I'll capture them anyway and I'll put them in the icebox and just keep them cold until I'm ready to take them out and use them. What I would say as well is when you are capturing your idea, don't just put the idea of the title. I did this for a little while, probably too long really. I would have an idea and uh, the title would come into my head. So I'd write the title down, I'd store it in Notion and then I'd come back to it a few weeks later and I think, I have no idea what I meant by that title. What I do now, when I put it into Notion, I will just jot down some ideas around the premise for the video. So, so for example, for this video, I might have put the title down, but if I hadn't given it any context, the title might not have meant much. I would have forgotten what it was I was wanting to include in the video. So I'll just put a title that says premise and then I'll just list things. So for this video, I'd have probably listed the, the C's. I might, have, oh, okay, in my mind, we've got six C's, let's write those down. And a, a, just a, a very brief overview of what is the, the kind of the overarching umbrella idea for that title. Because if you just have the title without any context, when you come back to look at the title, it probably won't mean anything to you. I think that's everything on my list that I wanted to talk to you about in terms of not letting YouTube take over your life. And I hope you found that helpful, especially if you're just getting started. Let me know in the comments, what would you add to the list? It doesn't have to begin with a C. That'd be fun though, wouldn't it? To see how many ideas we have that begin with a C. Let me know, I'll do it. If they begin with a C, that would be incredibly funny. If you've enjoyed this, please consider giving me a subscribe. I would love to hit the, the thousand subscribers. So if you can help me, that would be amazing. And if it doesn't cost you anything to subscribe. It's not like a subscription membership. You just hit subscribe. And it means you get to see some of my content when I put stuff out in the future. And if you've liked this, give me a thumbs up as well, because that helps the algorithm. Other than that, I will talk to you soon.